very heady kid, and so this was a good offset of something much more practical to do besides just books. And I knew I wanted to get either into pottery or weaving, and uh, weaving's easier. There's no kiln, there's no wheel, and it's quiet. Weaving is so endemic in almost every culture of the world. Uh, there's only a few places in the world where it didn't evolve and on its own. And it all kind of evolved in kind of a general same period of time in human evolution all across. So it's really fascinating. And then of course the technology was shared, but it became such a necessary thing to weave cloth that it was done everywhere, which means there's a lot of human ingenuity going into it. There's a lot of engineering design that happens in the loom that was then brought back into other areas of technology. Um, and, and actually the computers. The first computers were based directly on uh, some of the weaving technology, which is fascinating, with the jacquard looms and the, the punch cards. Every time you look at a loom, it really is a combination of thousands of years of human technology. I learned weaving by pulling books out of the library and studying. And then I had great teachers along the way. First teacher was in Golden, Colorado. Her name was Rosemary Amstein. She was an Austrian who had um, escaped during the time of the Nazis. And she was a fascinating woman. She always had lots of stories to tell. And she actually passed away in her late 70s in scuba diving. So she had this fabulous life and she celebrated it right up until the end. And she was the first one to pass on um, the joy of it, even though it's much more technical, the joy of actual um, getting into the, the fundamentals of the structure. There is a woman in Lexington whose grandmother had woven a rug, uh, I believe back in the 30s, and all the warp was falling apart, and so the rug was unusable, and so we are reweaving it. We pieced apart all the warp, we cut it all out, and this is all the weft. These are all the rags that were coming out of it. Washed them all, washed them all by hand because the fabric's very delicate at this point, and now we're reweaving it. Weaving is hard to get into. It's, uh, the equipment's expensive, and the skill level that you need to get it going just to get the loom set up can be very intimidating for a lot of people. Um, once the loom is set up, anyone can sit down and weave. I feel like oftentimes design gets so layered up with complication that we lose the essence of design. And so it's almost like food. If you take many, many, many ingredients and you layer them up, it tastes good, but there's also something muddy about it. And so I think that a lot of weaves are the same way when, although it's technically fun for a weaver to do really intense patterning, if you step away from it when you're not in the weaving world, it's almost like it, it just, it blurs, it muddies. It's hard to appreciate what was in there. Working with the 10th post designs, then it's very much about the design itself and still keeping the essence of the woven fabric. Uh, and I, I, I like plain weave stripes. And so within the weaving world, I'm, I'm very, very simple for what I'm passionate about. I consider myself a craftsman. Art is a huge part of it. But uh, the, the skill and the design, that combination, I think is much, it's more part of the craft world, the making world. It's uh, not fine art. I had debated whether to take out all of this green gauze, but it adds so much texture that I kept it in, and I think it's beautiful in there, but it takes a little bit more time to place it. It's not challenging. Uh, the challenge is in the setup, so anyone can weave, and uh, we actually teach children as young as four, as young as four, and they can pick up on it really, really quickly. Um, as you get into more patterning and skill, there's always more that you can develop, and you can always challenge yourself within it. 
but the basic structure of weaving is very accessible to just about anybody. It's actually been used uh, as a therapeutic model in a lot of situations because it's very integrating. You have the left, right sides of the brain and you're constantly crossing. And there's also a rhythm that you can develop which can be very integrating for those who have ADD, which is kind of sometimes my issue. And <laughs> it's a very rhythmic process, but it's very accessible. And so this is, this is my little piece of control in the world, is by controlling all the yarns. Keep them in mind, there's nothing else I can control. It's very therapeutic and for myself and for the others that I work with. And personally, I have 12 and 13 year old boys. And uh, so this is, a, this is a great parenting therapy too. <laughs> because every time, you know, there's always going to be little things that we deal with and it's, uh, I can just beat it out on the loom.